Video game technology is becoming significantly better every decade, and game developers and researchers don't seem to be slowing down anytime soon. Recently, we have seen the announcement of what the new technology of the Unreal Engine will bring to video games and video game developers. In this video, we will talk about the new groundbreaking technology of the Unreal Engine, in addition to what this all means for the future of the video game industry. Lumen Lumen is a system for generating real-time global illumination, or what is known as GI. It is actually able to react to changes in geometry or lighting source with no pre-baking or light maps needed. Epic Games said that the system needs diffuse inter-reflections with infinite bounces and indirect specular reflections in huge detailed environments at scales ranging from kilometers to millimeters. Artists and designers can create more dynamic scenes using Lumen, for example changing the sun angle for the time of the day, turning on flashlight, or blowing a hole in the ceiling. And indirect lighting will adapt accordingly. Nanite Nanite is a micro-polygon geometry that Epic Games claims produce triangles at the size of a pixel. The technology allows developers to use assets in the Unreal Engine containing millions or even billions of polygons without hits to performance. It points to a statue within the demo that is comprised of 33 million triangles. They claim that no bacon of normals and no authored LODs are required to achieve these kind of results. Then they go to show a room containing 500 of the same statue, each at the same level of detail. That makes for around 16 billion triangles in the scene, not including the room geometry. Furthermore, they said that developers can easily import these high-poly assets and up to 8K textures from mega scans or other painting and texturing applications. According to Epic Games, Nanite visualized geometry means that film quality assets comprising of hundreds of millions of polygons or even billions can be imported directly into the Unreal Engine, like anything from ZBrush sculpts to photogrammetry scans or CAD data, and they said that it is gonna all work. Once models are imported, Unreal handles all the streaming and scaling in real time, so developers don't need to worry about polygon counts or polygon memory budgets. Niagara The Niagara VFX system is one of two tools you can use to create and adjust visual effects inside the Unreal Engine. Before Niagara, the primary way to create and edit visual effects in Unreal Engine was to use Cascade. Even though Niagara has many of the same of particle manipulation methods that Cascade offers, the way you interact and build visual effects with Niagara is vastly different. One of the reasons they had to reinvent visual effects for Unreal Engine is that Unreal Engine is expanding its user base and it is now used by many industries outside the video game development industry, like architectural visualization, industrial design, virtual TV, and film production. Unreal Engine users are more diverse than ever before, from designer students to small indie developers to large professional studio teams to individuals and companies outside the video game industry. So moving forward, Epic Games wanted to create a visual effects system that will work for different users across different industries. Cascade, the old visual effects system, had some pros and cons, but they wanted to create a new system that had the advantages and strength of Cascade while including the new elements that remove the downsides of Cascade. Among the three systems that will be in Unreal Engine 5, I think that Nanite is the most important for the future of the video game industry because there are some huge and unbelievable things that will happen if Nanite is as strong as Epic Games claim it is. To understand how powerful Nanite technology will be, we have to understand a few things first. The Evolution of Polygon Count in Video Games Polygons have been used in the video game graphics for a very long time, although of course the earliest use of polygons was extremely crude and unappealing to the eye. After a period of polygons gradually being refined, more advanced versions of them began appearing in video games, with an increase in how many were used to make a single three-dimensional model. A notable benchmark was reached in 1996 with the release of Quake. The game is widely regarded as the first true 3D first-person shooter game and was celebrated for a massive leap in graphics technology. At any given time, Quake could render 200 polygons. From the point Quake released, video game hardware power began to rapidly increase, 
likewise increasing the number of polygons that could be rendered in-game engines. The advancement rate was exponential, so much so that by Quake 4 released in 2006, a single-player model had 2,600 polygons. This is not taking into account the game level, but the single character in the game. Unreal Tournament 3, on the other hand, released in 2007, used up to 12,000 polygons for weapon models seen in the first-person view. In modern times, a polygon count is not considered a serious problem in video game creation as it used to be before. Graphics technology has advanced to such a degree that a single character in a video game can use up to 100,000 polygons or even more sometimes depending on its complexity. And thanks to today's hardware, this is all possible. It seems outrageous, but the truth is that methods used to create games before have evolved so extensively that polygon count is no longer limiting as it was once. The focus is instead in modern times on factors such as realistic and detailed lighting, as well as complicated shaders, detailed surface textures, and realistic physics. Even though polycount is not as limiting, it has certain limits because video games don't run on supercomputers from an alien civilization. There is a limit and game developers have their own polygon budget based on calculations that engineers do to determine what the scene can handle. A modern graphics technique called tessellation can quickly and effectively create 3D models using tens of thousands of polygons with an extremely efficient load on hardware. This technique is used in modern video games and results in highly detailed 3D models. So where do developers want to spend polygons in the scene? They can create super rich environments or super high polygon characters and enemies and highly detailed bosses with hundreds of thousands of polygons. You have to know what your target platform is, memory and video requirement are, and then what your engine is technically capable of in terms of pushing the limits and then do the math. It's different for every scene and different situation. Over time, as Next Gen has continued to push the boundaries and limits, and polygon count is becoming actually less of a limiting factor as we move forward, and now textures are often as high or higher on the stack of consideration. You can make a model with 10,000 polygons look like a million polygon model with some 4K diffuse, normal, occlusion, emission, and detailed maps. But it seems like the NetEye technology is going to allow game developers to push the limits at least 15 times as we have seen in the video. As they said in the demo, there is a statue that is comprised of 33 million triangles. Not only that, but there is 500 of them in the scene, which is equal to 16 billion triangles in one place. This actually contradicts all the things we were talking about, or at least it makes no sense. Because by today's standards, few millions or even a few tens of millions of triangles is the absolute maximum we can push a polygon count in a video game environment. And with Nanite, we are talking about billions of polygons, or billions of triangles. Apparently, they are saying you can bring your 3D model from 3D modeling software such as Maya, 3DS Max or Blender, or even ZBrush with its millions of polygons without even needing to create any normal maps or whatsoever. If you have even created a game ready model or a game character before, you know that this is insane and can't be believed until you do it yourself, because I am having a hard time grasping this myself at the moment. The future of video game development If what we have seen in the Unreal Engine 5 demo is going to be the norm in the future, then there are a lot of things that will change. For instance, how many triangles you will need to put in one particular scene is not going to be an issue. Artists will model, sculpt and texture their models and throw them directly inside a game engine without using normal maps. The standard practice today in video game industry is to create all the maps necessary including normal maps to make a model with only a few thousands or even tens of thousands of polygons look like it is very high poly and very detailed with its scratches, dents and damage realized using a sculpting software such as ZBrush. Also lighting is going to be more realistic and believable because now lighting is baked in video game scenes not like we have seen in the demo where lighting is happening in real time as if we are using a render engine such as V-Ray or Octane Render. Even though the lighting looks amazing from the first look, it is not going to be actually great as if we are using a render engine such as V-Ray. Also one thing I expect will take place in the future is, 
The fact that companies such as Epic Games are pushing the boundaries of quality in visual effects in video games and so on, it is gonna make the competition push their standards further as a result because what they are doing right now is not gonna look as good to their competitor. As a consequence, this will probably result in a dramatic increase in how much video games will cost to make. Right now, top AAA video games can easily require $100 million to make, which is an insane amount of money. But hopefully with the increased demand for quality, we will see more technologies being developed to make the process easier and faster using automation and machine learning, which can help artists and studios to do their jobs faster. I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you have something to add, please leave it in the comment section below. Also, you can check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much and I will see you in the next one.